Hi everyone, this video is about derivatives of integrals in which we'll look at some examples of how the fundamental theorem of calculus is applied. This theorem is one of the most important in mathematics and tells us more or less that derivatives and integrals are inverse operations. We'll consider an example where we apply the fundamental calculus theorem and the famous chain rule. Let's discover the maths. First, remember that the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if we have a function f defined on a closed interval in R that's integrable, and we define a new function, capital F, on the closed interval AB in R, such that each x of this interval we make capital F of x correspond with the integral between a and x of small f, then if small f is continuous at x0, capital F is differentiable at x0, and the derivative of capital F at x0 is small f at x0. For the examples here, we'll assume that small f is a continuous function. As a result, small f will be integrable and continuous at any point in its domain. And so the derived function, large f prime of x, is small f of x. Now let's look at some specific applications. The first example is a direct application of our result. Consider the function f of x equal to the integral between 0 and x of e to the t squared over t plus 1 dt. One approach would be to calculate a primitive, apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus, that is Barrow's rule, and then derive the result. But that's totally unnecessary, and anyway, can you tell me a primitive of e to the x squared over x plus 1? If we put f of x equal to e to the x squared over x plus 1, notice that this function is continuous for any x greater than or equal to 0. Then applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have that capital F is differentiable, and so F prime of x is equal to what's inside the integral, namely e to the x squared over x plus 1. And we're finished. Simple, right? Now we'll look at a different example. In this, f of x is the integral between 1 and x squared of cos t over t dt, and we'll calculate its derivative. The novelty here is that the upper integration limit is x squared instead of x. How are we going to handle this? Consider g of x to be the integral where we put x instead of x squared. That is, g of x is the integral between 1 and x of cos t over t dt. Note that since cos x over x is a continuous function, for any x greater than or equal to 1, we can apply the fundamental theorem of integral calculus to g of x, so that g prime of x is equal to cos x over x. Notice that f of x is the same as g of x, but with x squared in place of x. So f of x equals g of x squared. So the derivative of f of x is equal to the derivative of g of x squared. We have the derivative of a composite function. Therefore, we can apply the chain rule. The derivative is the derivative of g of x squared times the derivative of what's inside, the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. g prime of x squared is the same as g of x, but with the x replaced by x squared. In other words, cos x squared over x squared. And this is times 2x. 
Then we can simplify by cancelling an x on the top and bottom, leaving us with 2 cos x squared over x, and there we have the derivative of f of x. To finish, we'll leave you with an exercise. Calculate the derivative of the function f of x equal to the integral between 0.5 and sine x of arc sine squared t over t cubed minus 1. And write your result in the comments below. Well, I hope you found this useful. As always, uh, hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already. And I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.